A looming global financial crisis of Congress's own making is still months away, but time is already running short on Capitol Hill. Political correspondent Lisa Desjardins caught up with lawmakers before they left town for the long Easter break and joins me here. Lisa, it's good to see you. Good to see you. So bring us up to speed. What happened this week and what does it mean for that debt ceiling debate? We're talking about that debt ceiling debate. Now, the two principles here that we need to watch are House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. He governs House Republicans there, what they will do. And of course, President Biden, he has to sign any legislation dealing with the debt ceiling. Those two men, Amna, have not spoken in two months. They had a lot of time. Now they have a lot less time. We did see some action from them today. This week, though, engagement, they sent each other letters. Look at this first, a letter from Speaker McCarthy to President Biden, uh, outlining potential ideas, essentially saying he would like spending cuts and maybe some tax cuts as well. Then President Biden, same day, wrote a letter back to Speaker McCarthy. Now. The content of these letters was also spelled out today by both of these men in separate news conferences. First, I want to play what Speaker McCarthy told us in his news conference today. He said he wants to sit down with President Biden as soon as possible. So what we need to do is sit down like any household would happen and find places that we can eliminate waste, the fraud, but more importantly, create a system that makes the energy in America stronger, lower price, but make our economy even better. The conference is very close, and if the president doesn't act, we will. All right, that was an important moment. The conference, he means the Republican conference. He's saying, essentially, that the House Republican conference plans to pass something. We'll see what. What did the White House say today? Here's White House spokesperson Karine Jean-Pierre. What we really need from, uh, from Speaker McCarthy and House Republicans is to see their budget. Where's the budget? They have not passed a budget in the House. This is essentially saying, we won't meet with you until you have a plan. Speaker McCarthy say, no, we want to meet with you first. It's a classic. They're starting to engage, though. That's why we're talking about this now. There's not progress yet, but this seems to be a realization that they've got to figure something out in coming weeks. Dueling letters and dueling press conferences right now. But yeah. you do have some new reporting on what could be a short-term off-ramp. What do we know? Talking to sources on Capitol Hill, especially those conservative Republicans who are driving the train in the House, like Freedom Caucus members, it seems to me clear that they are now getting ready to accept a short-term deal to extend the debt ceiling, maybe for a couple of months. They are hoping in exchange for some easy, they think, to get compromises, like, for instance, there's some unspent COVID relief money that they think perhaps President Biden would allow to go back into the federal treasury. Now. There is a problem, though, for Kevin McCarthy and those Republicans. They don't really necessarily have 218 votes, a majority, for any idea yet. There is also, I have to say, a problem for President Biden. Some of his Democrats also have issues with him. We saw this op-ed from Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia come out today in which he said the Biden administration is determined to pursue an ideological agenda rather than confront debts and deficits. Senator Manchin wants a part in negotiations going ahead. So you see pressure on both sides. Let's talk about the timing. We think the debt ceiling right now, we will hit it, run out of money to spend, essentially, for the government, sometime between June and September, mm -hmm. a very wide set of months. Why don't we know? Because this is tax month. We should know April 18th how much revenue the government has brought in. That will tell us more about our timeline. A lot of important information coming very soon. Lisa, while I have you here, I do want to ask you about another issue lawmakers are being asked a lot about in the wake of another mass shooting in America. That is, of course, gun violence and where it stands. You recorded what I think is fair to call a very unusual confrontation yesterday. Tell us about that. That's right. Standing outside of the House chamber uh, uh, is a place where there are very hard rules and decorum is firm and important. But yesterday I witnessed, coming out of the gun debate, um, a Democratic member starting to shout his frustration about what he sees as a lack of action on this issue. I want to play what happened next. Jamal Bowman is a representative from New York. He's the African-American you're going to see in this clip. And he was con he was raising this issue, and then Republican Tom Massey came over to also engage with him. Here's what happened. I'm talking about gun violence. You know, there's never been I'm a, school about gun in a school that allows teachers to carry. Carry would you, guns? Would you, would you, would you more guns lead to more death. Would you co-sponsor More right guns now? lead to more death. This is very personal for both these men. Uh, Representative Bowman is a former crisis intervention teacher and school principal in New York. He was talking about kids that he sees dying, and he sees a lack of intervention on guns from lawmakers. Representative Massey was saying, no, I don't think it is a, that is not the problem. We need to 
arm teachers. More guns is the answer. The other one saying, no, fewer guns is the answer. While it was shouting, it was clear that there was actually substance to what they were saying. Now, this comes not in isolation, Amna. Today we saw in Nashville, in the state capitol in Tennessee, protests, look at this, um, hundreds of people coming out, sparked by the death of those six people, including those three nine-year-olds. This was the first time that state legislature had met but since the shooting. So you see there is something happening right now in this moment, a real outcry for legislation. I asked Speaker McCarthy today, uh, what specifically do you think should be done on this? He said there should be a national conversation. He didn't give me specifics. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that conversation right now. What we know is that, according to the Washington Post, there have been 17 school shootings this year. And we also know that gun violence is the leading cause of death among American children. Hard and true facts from Lisa Desjardins. Lisa, thank you. Okay.